Hello and welcome to the Sleep Matters podcast from dreams. Everything you need to know about how to get a great night's sleep and why it matters so much. I'm Dr. Pixie McKenna and in this episode we're chatting about how nighttime disturbances can impact our sleep. And I'm really thrilled to say that today I'm joined by Dr. Mike Dilks. And Mike is a snoring specialist, he's an ENT surgeon and he has just literally written a book on the subject. The book is called Stop Snoring the Easy Way and the Real Reasons You Need To. So I'll be interested to hear more about that because I am a snorer as you already know, Mike. And we're also hoping that Mike can give us a little bit of help because we've got Sophie and Dorian here. And I believe Sophie is actually the snorer and Dorian is the sufferer. Yes. Just the same, <laughs> same as it is in my relationship. Um, do you know that you snore or are you aware that you snore? I mean, do you wake yourself I, up and feel like, oh, I must have been snoring? I don't know that I'm snoring. That I sometimes wake myself up with the noise of it. But I personally, I think it's more that it wakes Dorian up than it wakes me up, unless okay. I've got a heavy cold, in which case it's sort of like that thing yeah. where you just sort of wake up. We're looking knowingly at each other. We know <laughs> yeah. exactly what you mean. <laughs> um, Mike, snoring. Uh, you know I'm a snorer. In fact, you know my nose quite intimately. You've looked up my nose with your telescope. I have. Um, and told me why I snore, and I chose to ignore your advice and I still snore but I'm going to read your book um, talk to us about snoring what's the most common reason for people to snore well I guess there are probably two very common causes of snoring that's being very overweight or drinking far too much alcohol every evening thanks <laughs> I don't think you're either of those don't worry <laughs> then it goes on to the slightly less common causes which is, which is an inbuilt problem with your breathing which we know you have because I had a look down your nose and mm -hmm. you have a bend in your septum which blocks you off. And if your nose is blocked, you breathe through your mouth. And if you breathe through your mouth, your whole jawbone slides backwards because it's a, sli a sliding joint, the uh, jaw, jaw, jaw joint. Um, and therefore the tongue base goes back and clogs your airway. I'm now pushing my, my larynx back and, and obstructs the airway slightly, causing turbulent airflow, which then picks up any stru structure in the throat that can vibrate, the soft palate. Mm -hmm. And that classic flapping sound, which is snoring, is actually secondary to an obstruction lower down. And it's just turbulence. It's, it's called resonance um, frequency um, behaviour. Right. I'm a bit complicated. But, we, but essentially, we've got turbulence. Is, is with You're our getting turbulent issues. airflow at night. You don't get it during the day because your, your, your muscles are all in good tone. Mm -hmm. and everything's being held apart. That's why I devise these exercises to try and increase the tone of the muscles. But at night, everything goes floppy. The airway naturally narrows anyway. If there's it's it's an added problem like your tongue base going backwards, that's it. You'll get turbulent flow, which is noisy on its own, but it will also pick up other structures, particularly the soft palate. And so I guess that explains as well why if you are if you drink alcohol and you have a sort of an anatomical issue that you're going to snore more because you're going to have more relaxation of the structures. And exactly. Al more. Alcohol affects your level of sleep. And if you go into the very deep stage four sleep or REM sleep, when you lose all your muscle tone completely, alcohol pushes you into that sort of very deep sleep much more quickly. And therefore you're having less of the lighter sleep and much more of the deep sleep and much more therefore of the floppy tone sleep. And I mean, do you see more and more people coming with snoring? Well, I wouldn't say particularly more. I see more females who snore, yeah. to be fair. The other day I was treating the country's loudest snorer, who was a female. Right. How <laughs> do you competition? Oh, the oh, well, there we go. Well, we know, we, well, maybe. How do we enter the country's loudest snoring? Well, there was a competition and she won it and I saw her and... Oh! Strangely enough, I, I did improve her snoring immensely by just giving her a spray for her nose. Right. Because she, she had quite a marked rhinitis, <laughs> which means swelling of the inside of the nose. And a simple spray can actually make a big it's difference to that. Tough. Sophie, would, have you ever um, thought about seeking a solution for your snoring? Because I'm sure you're like me. If you snore, well, it's irrelevant really unless it's waking you up. Yeah. You know, we... I think I think because I'm such an optimist, I just think it's going to stop because I haven't always been a snorer. So I kind of feel like, well, I haven't always been one, so it'll probably just go away. Um, so I haven't really done anything. Yeah. I mean, I try and sleep on my side um, rather than on my back. Um, but, you know, I haven't really sought any no. other measures. No. Would you, um, how do you feel about that? Do you think that it might be a good idea? I mean, is it, is it a big problem for you? 
No, Although I think you don't have the problem. I think You're it's married going to, to the go. problem. Well, I'm married to the problem. I think it's going to go away. Yeah, do you? Yeah. <laughs> I think so too. Really? Yeah. Why? It's going to disappear. Yeah. Well, How certainly with a lot of nudging, it kind of does yeah. go away. So that's, that's one way of getting it going. How long but has it been going on for? I think since I was uh, pregnant with our first baby. So that's about mm, nearly 10 years ago. I was right. it. I thought it was the second baby that it uh, started. Was oh, that the worst? Yeah, I don't remember. I, do, I, I remember don't, snoring remember when I was now. when was I was. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, I remember snoring that. when I was heavily pregnant with the first one. Oh yeah, maybe. And then it went away. It and then it did go, go away. away. Then but I, I have yeah. had the second one like two years ago. Now. Yeah. <laughs> and the snoring yeah, started again. No. So yeah. explain, explain that to us, Mike. Well, hormones and snoring are a, a real thing. And in pregnancy, all sorts of things happen to your body. In particular, you retain fluid, you put a bit of weight on, um, that increases pressure on your neck, and that's on its own can trigger snoring. But we're very interested in looking at the menopause and, yeah. and how sleep patterns change during menopause. I mean, this young lady is a bit young for that. But it is, it is a real feature. It's been studied quite closely, although we don't have any particularly hard and fast um, um, decisions made on that yet. But what is becoming more apparent is that the, the realisation that a lot of females snore is becoming yeah. widely known. It used to be a, a, a jocular man's thing. Oh, it's old uncle so-and-so. Yeah. He's a bit of a snorer. But now people are realising that it's really almost equally as common in females as males. And I suppose uh, women are coming forward because actually maybe previously they were too embarrassed to come forward. Yeah. And because we've got a bit more awareness about, you know, I mean, snoring keeps you awake. Obviously mm. it gives you awake, doesn't give you awake, doesn't give me awake. Um, and the realization that actually if snoring is the symptom of something like sleep apnea, then you've got to absolutely get a diagnosis and get that managed. Otherwise, you've got long term health consequences. Yeah, I think it's probably one of those sort of flags in terms of female liberaliz liberal liberalization. Because in the old days, it was, it was quite a hierarchical family. The man was this, the lady was that, the children did this. And there was, there was an inequality. But now, you know, if there's a real equality and, and women are now allowed to come out and say, yes, I am a bit of a snore. It's not such a social stigma because they can mm. be just normal people. Maybe it's, yeah. a sign of, it's a sign of the time, which is obviously a good yeah. thing. And I suppose women are drinking more. We're bigger than we were and all these other things that will uh, increase our chances of snoring. Yeah, I think there's something in that snoring. too. Yeah. yeah. What are the short-term solutions? Because much as <laughs> we're not bothered, it'd be good to have a few short-term solutions that we might be able to implement. Yeah, well, of course, the obvious short-term solution is that when you're asleep at night and your partner snoring, you just gently take the pillow from underneath your head, pop it over the, the nose and mouth of the, of the snorer, and then push down really hard <laughs> until it all stops. And any <laughs> Which a lot of people do feel like doing, right? I oh imagine you felt like doing that. When you can't sleep. But obviously, that's not really um, acceptable. So short-term, the obvious thing to do is to sleep in a different room. Yeah. But of course, if you're on holiday or somewhere, you haven't got that option. So these, th these issues are often worse on holiday. Otherwise, you can use decongestant sprays for your nose. So, but that might be something that maybe you could do for holidays or if you knew that you were both yeah. stuck in the, under the one roof. Yes, you certainly want to consider taking some nasal decongestant on holiday. And what about stuff, um, again, I think we were just talking about this a bit earlier, but um, have you tried anything, Sophie, any of these like things for your nose or special pillows or...? Um, I haven't. My dad used to have um, stickers... Those, I don't know what they're called, but those on his nose. And I don't think they did anything. So that's why right. I haven't bothered, because I just thought, well, they didn't work for him. So, yeah. you know. What about the way you're sleeping? Is there, are there any ways that maybe we could train ourselves to sleep, uh, uh, you know, on a, in a certain position or any particular? Yeah. Well, on the side, I mean, that's the first yeah. thing you do. You lose weight and sleep on your side. Right. Often that, that, that advice on its own. It's going to make a big difference. Makes quite a big difference to a lot of snores. They never come to see me. But if you, I always say to people before they come, you know, if you've tried sleeping on your side and you're not overweight, then come and see me because there's obviously an underlying problem. Yeah, and then if you haven't done that first, then try it and uh, save yourself a trip. Okay, and to train yourself to sleep on the side, you just gotta. You just gotta get on with it. Get on with it. Yeah. <laughs> Spoken <laughs> like a true surgeon. Get on with it. Um, would you? I mean, would you consider what, what would be the point at which um, you know you would consider doing something? Sophie, I mean, would it be if, if there was a big, if it caused problems in your relationship? Yeah, I think so. I think if it made Dorian so tired that he was grumpy on a daily basis, then that would prompt me to do something. Can I just say, right, 
I think he's a little bit tired. <laughs> I saw him upstairs. He did fall And as far as I'm <laughs> concerned, he was asleep. He I was. did. It was, great. Yes. it was great. So he's a little bit tired. Yeah. So maybe your snoring is keeping him up. <laughs> you, genuinely, though, it, I mean, I mean, Mike, that statistic about you know divorces and people citing as uh, snoring as a reason is, is quite quite worrying. I mean, if someone was going to divorce me, I'd like them to divorce me for something better than the fact yeah. that I've got a big nose and snore. I was quite <laughs> interested in what you were saying. I, I think you mentioned in your book you were talking about um, uh, exercises, like facial exercises. That that some, a measure like that mm. seems like something that you know it's quite a conservative thing to do. I wonder if that. Yes, I mean you're quite young. Yeah. Your tone will still be good. Those exercises are really more for the fifty-plus age group, oh, right. like me. Um, my story has improved immensely since I started doing the exercises. Because, but I you know I invented them and I, and I really worked them out. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, I think it's it's not so much for the younger younger group right, okay. the exercises, but you can certainly try them. It wouldn't harm. You may yeah. find a difference. Show us a, give us an example of what, what that might be. Well, there there are twelve different ones. Give us an easy one. The the, the easy adopter we call it. <laughs> Basically, when you stick your tongue out as far as you can, yeah, really far, so it hurts. Yeah. And then you you hum your national anthem from start to finish. <laughs> really? How many times a day do you do that? Just a night. Ah 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 ah! That's quite sore. Yeah, yeah, it hurts. <laughs> yeah. But the hurt is good because afterwards you then feel the sort of um the the, the blood supply to the to the tongue mm -hmm. increasing, mm -hmm. and it feels warmer, mm -hmm. and you know with time you will increase the tone of uh, of the muscles. The tongue is all muscle. And therefore, mm. that's the part you really want to work on. That's the part where, ah. where snoring is triggered. I'll tell you what, that's a win-win if you can tell me that that uh, gets rid of wrinkles as well. No. And we're on yeah. to a good thing. Read the next book. There's <laughs> another book coming out on wrinkles very, very shortly. Um, what would your takeaway be to someone who's... This is so ironic that I'm even asking you. Uh, what would your takeaway be to someone who's married to a snorer? What, have, you, have you any strategies that have worked for you over the years? I think poking is a very good strategy. Poking, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Poking okay. is a very good strategy. Don't poke for too long. Don't wake yourself up. You know, just yeah. Don't get off. angry, right? Because if you oh, do, oh yeah, actually no, yeah. Um, you'll be awake. But I do say, don't do that. Don't yeah, I? You I do say, say, stop, stop it. it. Stop, stop it. it. That's yeah. it. Stop it. But you do move, and you, that does change and it. And it. it's true. It does stop. Yeah, and that doesn't side. disturb you, does it? Really? I think I'm so so used to being disturbed by children waking me up that somebody just going stop it is like nothing it's all part yeah. of it it's all yeah. part of it part of life yeah I, I think I, I mean I, I don't have any tips I've snored for years and I, I kind of used to it um, I, I do find it that one and again we spoke about this earlier but one point I do find snoring really embarrassing is if you fall asleep on a plane or a train which mm. I do a lot is when you wake up and you know you've been snoring <laughs> and everybody's looking at you yeah, and you're all yeah. like nicely, smartly dressed, <laughs> and there's dribble coming down. Yeah, it's <laughs> bad. What, what will your top tips be? So, anyone who's listening to this who's with a snorer or is a snorer? Well, the top tips are obviously look at your weight, mm -hmm. look at your lifestyle, look at your bedroom hygiene, simple things like that. Look at alcohol intake. These are all the, the obvious things to, to, to start with. And once you've, once you've gone through all that, um, and you, you know, you've corrected what you can, then you've got to consider seeing an ENT surgeon. Okay. Because it's an obstruction in the airway. Snoring is triggered by that. And without relieving that obstruction, you're not going to get very far. And if someone is going to see their GP and they're a snorer, um, I guess one of the tips, well, I would say to my patients is, it's really hard to go, to come into a doctor and describe snoring. Would you advise people to tape it so that we can hear like... Yeah. I think there are these snoring apps now, which mm. you can just put on your mobile phone next to your bed which can give you quite a good indication of how your, your, your treatment's going. So if, you, if you're on a diet and you're snore apping every night and you're watching the, the loudness and the frequency drop, 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 that gives you good positive reinforcement. So that sort of um, approach is, is a good one. And for people who might have periods over the course of the night where their partner might think, oh, they've stopped breathing and they're falling asleep during the day. I mean, I guess what, if your snoring is different to standard snoring where, you know, you just snore and snore and snore, you wake other people up. But if there are big pauses, that's a red flag also, surely, to... Yeah, sleep apnea puts you into a, a life-shortening um, spiral. Um, it's, it's quite a serious disease. It's a bit underrated, I think, but it's real. So if you've got any evidence of sleep apnea, then, then really have to go straight to your GP and say, I need to be referred. 
Yeah. Because that, that can be serious. And in that instance, I presume it is helpful so that your GP can listen to some of your snoring yeah. sequences. Well, I think GPs are reluctant to, to refer because there are so many snorers out there. We always yeah, yeah. GPs we can with refer a problem. everyone. Yeah, it would be a problem. Yeah. So well, yes. it'll be 50% of the people at this... Well, actually, everyone but you would yeah, be going really. yeah. to the doctor. To be fair. Um, <laughs> that's right. But of course, evidence is great. So the GP listens to your evidence. You can't really refute that. Yeah. So you may get, it helps to get you referred on. So you've got two lady female snorers here. Um, we're not particularly bothered about not snoring, I think. Kind of, we're on the same page. Yeah, it doesn't so. bother us. Why do we need to stop snoring? What's the big deal? He's not, he doesn't seem angry about it. He's a bit tired, but he doesn't seem angry about it. Well, okay, yeah, the big deal is that snoring and sleep apnea are all one disease. If we were just sat here now, we held our breath for, you know, two minutes. It's quite hard to do. But eventually our blood oxygen saturation will drop to below 90%, possibly 85%, possibly 80%. It would be hard work for us to do that, but we could do it. This happens 10, 20, 30, 40 times an hour in sleep apnea patients. They obstruct completely. Their oxygen levels drop, 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 drop. They then wake up in a panic because their brain says you're having a nightmare, something terrible is going on. They wake up in a sweat and panic thinking they're dying uh, because they are. You know, without waking up, they would die. Of course, they do wake up, their airways open, they start to breathe, they settle down, they go back to sleep, they start to snore, then they block off again and again and again and again. That happens throughout the night. And that puts a huge strain on the body, particularly the heart. So their airways, I guess the, the difference between your average snorer who might snore after a few pints or might snore when they put on a little bit of weight. With the sleep apnea, if you're in bed next to someone, you'll know because they're having pauses and then sort of restarting, but in a quite of a frenetic way. Yeah, minute long pauses of no breathing at all, yeah. waking up in terror, in a sweat, going back to sleep, the whole thing recurring throughout the night, hundreds of times per night. That's true sleep apnea, and that's quite a serious condition. So that's important to... And, and you're uh, saying that what we're experiencing is a little... We're on... We're sort of... Are we on the slippery slope? I'm getting worried now, well, actually. Yeah, well, yeah. I, mean, I, I think all sleep apnea start by being snorers. snorers. It gets worse and worse and worse. They put more and more weight on. The lifestyle's worse and worse. Everything's going the wrong way and they end up with sleep apnea. You may never go that far. I doubt you will, either of you. But if you eradicate snoring early on, it can never happen. Right, so go straight off, tackle it, rather than wait for yeah. it to get worse. Yeah, don't, don't let it happen. Just make, make it never occur. So in your book, you've got exercises, which anyone can do, yeah. and they will benefit, presumably, people with straightforward snoring or sleep apnea. Any other little tips, any other little secret weapons in there? In the book, mm. well, there's a lot. There's a lot in the book about sleep hygiene. Yeah, it's quite strange how how many people eat in bed late at night. They have TVs on in their bed late at night. They don't go to to bed in a very calm state of mind, and they're already started off on the wrong foot. So your bedroom should be a place where you just sleep. Everything else is done somewhere else. As you go in there, you're mentally prepared. You feel tired. You go off. You don't keep keep yourself awake doing other things. So sleep hygiene is something we're, we're really keen on. Other tricks, well, obviously, you've got to look at your airway. And if, you, if you've got big tonsils or a blocked nose, then really you're heading for an ENT surgeon. Okay. So and as you know, Well, as you know, I, I would laser them right back because it's, yeah. it's a nice technique for, for that sort of thing. Um, yeah, other tips. Well, we talk about diet again, weight loss, of course, alcohol. Um, sprays for the nose. The, the country's loudest snore, as I said. I gave her a very powerful combination spray, and she really almost completely stopped. Yeah, so the little, little things can make a big yeah, difference. Yeah, I was quite surprised. I thought she was heading for surgery. But yeah. actually, when we retested her three months down the line, she was way quieter. Wow, amazing. Handy. And, and I think the exercises are genius because everyone, everyone can do those. Yeah, they're easy. Yeah. If you know the national anthem. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Well, I didn't even them. know which one you were actually singing there. But it's the Irish National Anthem. Oh, it's the Irish National Anthem. Yeah. Yeah. Of course I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much. Uh, really good tips, Mike. I'm going to read that book and try and, send you a free my, uh, try and improve <laughs> my, my snoring. And uh, Sophie, are you going to change your gonna change anything? I think I might read the book, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah definitely. A good starting point. Dorian? All right, I'll read the book. Read the book as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. I will. Yes. Good, good. Excellent. Thank you very much.
Thank you for watching the Sleep Matters podcast from Dreams. If you enjoyed it, then please press the like button below. And if you want to see more, then you can subscribe to the series.